Data is, a, is essentially like patterns, right? Even if the pattern is not very obvious, and even if the data is somewhat random, by its nature, there is some form of pattern to it or some form of rhythm to it. And those, those patterns and the, you know, the data that they provide, they exist in nature. You know? So by visualizing them, we're just, it's a visualization of what is, what is really there. It's no longer rows in a table, it, it, it comes alive. So I'm Dan McCary, uh, I'm an information designer. I work with uh, people who want to tell stories with data. Um, I work at sort of the intersection of um, development and arts and journalism. So I think there's a big trend right now, and this is a trend that I think exists in, in, like in lots of fields. So uh, I think it exists in public health, but it also exists in like business and um, social media uh, and tech fields in general. You know, as um, digital data visualization is growing as a field, there's more and more awareness of what what how do we do good data visualization and, and why why is it useful and why should we do it? We're collecting more data than we used to, so it's important that we visualize it. And as more people are visualizing data, it increases the conversation about well, what does good visualization data visualization look like? Even if you're producing data visualization to support your um, your research or your project, like you know, there's more there's more pressure on you now to produce stuff that is actually going to be usable and understandable and and hopefully shareable. The more effective your data visualizations are, the the more attention that your research or story or report will receive. If we're looking at like great data visualizations, what are the themes that they usually have in common? I think the first is that they're you know they're usually honest. Um, so this goes down to you know again going back to present correctly presenting your data in an unbiased way. They're usually beautiful in some sense, like even if. Um, even if you know the data that they are representing is not necessarily um, particularly positive, you know, thinking about like mapping disease or epidemics, like it's not you know not a necessarily a happy thing. But they even the even you know serious subjects can be presented beautifully. Um, they also tend to be insightful in the in the sense that if you explore these um, you know great data visualizations, um, you can you can actually learn from them. So you can find trends and uh, you know maybe new stories within the data itself. Another one that I would say is like they should be interactive. Um, you don't they don't necessarily have to be. You can make I think it's perfectly possible to make great um, data visualizations that are not interactive, but they tend to be much richer if they are. So Sonia came to the Pulitzer Center to ask for help in visualizing a data set that she'd found on. Uh, cholera in the 1850s in New York and this was like it was a cool data set but it was essentially like a handwritten data set from the doctors who collected it at the time. It was going to be a challenge just to visualize that on top of a regular Google map because uh, you know uh, roads and things had changed places etc so visualizing this data was going to be um, a challenge anyway as a list of addresses in a, in a notebook not you know it's going to be hard to tease the stories out of that. So her original goal was to visualize that data, but I, you know, I think all of us who, um, you know, when we heard her idea, thought, well, this is something, this is really valuable. Like, we could create something really powerful with this. Modern cholera epidemics are not so dissimilar. The conditions required for cholera epidemics haven't changed that much. It became pretty quickly, well, how could we, how could we show that, and how could we do that in an interesting and exciting format? And so. You know, th that was the story, and I think in the end, it didn't take long for us to feel like the best way to do that was going to be within some kind of interactive data visualization where you could, uh, where the user could explore 1850s New York and all of the great, like, kind of archival maps that, that existed from that time. So the user can click on the individual data points, which in most cases throughout the visualization are just relate to the proximity and volume of the cases at that location. And when they do that, you know, they'll get an indication of how many color cases were there. They can zoom in and zoom out on the location. So on the New York map, they can, uh, you know, essentially zoom into the block level and see where these color cases occurred. We put the modern satellite map of New York behind the old archival map to give them a sense of what modern day New York would look like as well. So they can explore both the cholera data and the archival maps in the context of modern New York as well.
the key to this is if your data you know, relates to volume or geographic spread or location or has a time component, maybe it's over time, that your, the initial presentation of that data should reflect that. So that I, if I look at this within a few fe seconds, okay, I may not know exactly what the data is about, but I get a sense that this is something that's, that, you know, that there's a time element to this, or that there's a location element to this, or there's a volume element to this. They can be multi-leveled in, in the sense that you could spend hours exploring them, but they should, they should, um, they should be simple and, uh, and you know, easy for you know, any generation to understand. And I think if they are like that, if they're built in that way and that they're shared in that way, they have the potential to reach a very broad audience. To me, it's a creative challenge. So it's about looking at your data set and you know, thinking about what the trends are within it, you know, being honest and the data may not be showing what you want it to show. To me, data visualization is the process of exploring truths in data. Good data visualization is like good journalism. I think really good journalism is able to go down the center and not get swayed by those. And I think it's the same with data visualization, that, that you've got to present your data honestly. If you do that, then you can use these products that you make. You know, obviously, they can be beautiful if, they, you know, if you choose them to be. But they're beautiful not just necessarily because they're a bunch of pretty colors and patterns, but because they also have, there are truths to be found within the data that is there.